Hello my friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Davi Kalil and I've been teaching painting for a while here in Brazil and in this moment I need to, uh, that we need to stay at home because of the virus, the coronavirus and all of this, I decided to do a bunch of tutorial videos for you and for everybody else who wants to stay at home or who needs to stay at home, at least we can stay at home uh, studying and improving our skills. I'm not in the best place to do these videos right now because of this situation, but I'm adapting. I'm sitting here in a table, you hear a lot of noise around me, but just don't care, just try to focus in the, the method that I'm uh, showing right now. Um, as I said, I live in Brazil and I've been teaching painting for 15 years around this right now, so I have a method that I use to teach, that's my method of work as well. And I will try to show you and explain. In this first video, I will just talk about the method, about the paint and how are we going to use it. In the next videos, I will start to show the paintings that we can do and all of this. And you are invited to, to watch it, to comment or whatever you want to do. Right? So let's try to, to pass through this uh, calamity, this pan pandemic situation. Uh, staying at home and studying. Why not? If we, if we need to stay at home, we can use this time to do, to improve our skills, our techniques, right? Okay, so the paint that I use is gouache painting, right? This is a Brazilian uh, gouache. It's not very good actually, but it's okay to do these studies. Uh, and I love gouache because I, I studied a lot of watercolor with excellent professors here and oil painting, traditional oil painting. But I fell in love with gouache because I thought that with gouache I can do uh, things that we, we find in watercolor techniques that are beautiful and things that I learned, I've learned in, in oil painting that I can kind of em, uh, emulate. I don't know if this word exists in English, but uh, uh, it works very well if I try the, the oil techniques with gouache. So I kind of mix it. Skills that I've learned in oil and in watercolor with this media, with gouache media. Right? So I will explain to you. Uh, and we usually begin talking about uh, values. The, the value scale uh, and the transparent paint, opaque paint, and high key, mid key, low key. How to work with these things, <laughs> right? So here there are two studies that I've done uh, earlier, and this is with uh, analogous colors as well. I will show you the colors. I love to work with colors, but I would advise you if you're a beginner or if you're beginning now to to work with gouache, maybe you guys work already with digital painting or other medias, but I always uh, advise to begin with black and white and grays and, and understand the importance of value, the, the lights and darks and the, the keys, like this high key, mid key, low key, those three groups of, of values, right? Uh, so, let me explain to you how I, how I work. Uh, usually, I begin telling a, a story and, and showing a, a, a scheme here. I don't know. I will show you right now. Um, as I said, I teach for a while, so I've been uh, introducing the, the, my painting process in this way for a while. So first of all, I call my, my painting, it's the name of the channel, Pintura Relâmpago. Uh, it's kind of speed painting in Portuguese. It's not speed painting because I create this it, if you translate like literally, it would be like thunder painting, maybe. Because relâmpago, it's, it's uh, thunder. But uh, 
is that flash of light, actually, relâmpago. So in Brazil we say relâmpago when we are say, talking about things that are fast. And I just started to call pintura relâmpago, it was like speed painting here, right? Uh, yeah, I'm here in Brazil, near to the street, so you, you, I think you hear a lot of noise. But as I said, it's not the best place to do this video, but that's what I can do right now. Um, and to begin, this Pintura Relâmpago, as I said, uh, if we talk about value, we need to have an understanding of our tools, you know? Our tools are not only paint and, and, and brushes. We, we use concepts as well to, to, to work our painting. And the first concept that I, I, I like, actually all of the concepts that, that help me to simplify, to, to have less to work with. You know, I, I, don't, I don't like to have one million colors, one million uh, 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 different values to, to choose. I, I like less. When we have less and good principles and, and, and concepts, we, we, it's easier to choose, right? So, like value, I can have one million different values and, and lights and darks, but I, I like to work with nine. It's not that I count nine, but I, I prepare myself to, to understand the painting in nine different values. So I get this scale and I will divide in three here. It doesn't need to be perfect. Right. So these three, I will divide in three as well. Good. The last one is a bit larger, but it's okay. Why do I divide three and then three again? Because then, with nine, I will have the, here, low key, here, mid key, here, high key. Right? Have you heard about this? High key, mid key, low key are the, the darkest uh, values, the ones that are the grays that are in the middle and the lighter ones. Right? So we can have this scale here and usually like this is very basic, right? This is very like I, I'm beginning in the beginning. In the <laughs> I, I imagine that you've heard about this a lot. but. I have a kind of a way that I created just to, to talk about this and to teach, especially. Um, but first we need to, to, to begin with, with something that's very common. So how can I work with this? I will not do the scale here because I want to do it in the way that I will show you. But this we need to know, like this is black, right? Here is white, and then we go to all of the grays. I will not do this here because I want to show the way that I separate those those values and how I I use this to understand the painting process. Because something we need to learn about about uh, traditional media, uh, because I paint with digital digital media as well. I work with storyboard illustration. I've I've been doing this for a while. And I, most of my work as an artist, like for the industry, I do digital. But I love to paint and I paint all the time and I teach painting, like traditional media. So I, I mix a lot, both, both. But I know and I understand that in, in digital painting, we have a lot of ways to go around some mistakes or some things that we we didn't plan very well. I, I see a lot of digital artists, they just start doing and trying and, and, and they don't need to worry because they can work in different layers. They can, and this is beautiful. I, as I said, I love digital 
art, digital painting. I love to work in the computer. But what, what changes? What, what's very different when you go to traditional media? You don't have all of the superpowers. <laughs> you are, are, are just a human being. I, usually I say this, like, in digital world, when I paint in digital media, it's, I'm kind of a demigod, you know, like a superhero. I have a lot of magical powers. When I go to the paper and paint with, with traditional media, then I have uh, these um, limitations of a human being because I am, uh, uh, how can I say, if something goes wrong here, uh, I, I have some ways to go around the, the mistakes, but usually I need to plan a lot. I think this is the difference. You need to plan a lot before you start traditional media. And in, in digital, you, you, you can plan, but you can just start working and, and decide in the middle that you, you have the tools to do this, right? So we, we need to plan. And how do I plan the stuff that I need to do? I will show you. I will move this scale here and I will do it's kind of two pairs of stairs. It's like this. Um, um, dois, três, quatro, cinco, seis, sete, oito, nove. All right, here I have nine. Right? So I will, I will not look like this straight, like a straight line. I will understand my value, like uh, going up and down a stair. But what can I do that's even better? I can do this. Um, two, three, four, five. If I don't pay attention, I will put one more here. Three. So, one, two, three, one, two, three, and then three more. One, two, three. Right. See? Here, I will find everything I have to work with Bosch. Uh, what's the first thing we need to learn about Bosch? Uh, as I said in the beginning, Bosch works kind of a watercolor if we are working transparent without the white only with black and the colors and a lot of water, it goes very similar like, like a watercolor. And when we put white or we take out the water and paint with a lot of, uh, with less water and more uh, uh, thick painting, we can do some things that really look like oil painting, right? So in this uh, uh, drawing, I can put everything that I need to know and to remember about the process. Even how I begin and how I end my painting, right? Uh, well, before I start talking about this, please understand, there are no such things as uh, rules in art, right? This is a method that I've been working and it, it works for me and for a lot of students that I have. If it works for you, good. If it doesn't work for you, it's okay as well. You can find other process, you can create your method. But maybe some of these principles will, will make you think and help you to find your way. Because you don't need to paint like I do, right? I will, I will say like, oh, do this and don't do that. But it's not that I'm saying that I like own the truth. Uh, it's just my way <laughs> of talking. So I want to make it clear that this is just one method of painting that I, I've been developing here. but. Uh, it, you don't need to, like, I don't want to sound like I'm saying, oh, this is the best way. It's, it works for me, right? You can find your way. So, as I said, first, two, two things that we need to remember. Uh, the principles of wash, of wash, of watercolor, and the principles of oil painting or opaque and transparent, that I prefer to say. So, what's a transparent paint? paint? How, how does it work, the, the system of transparent paint? Like watercolor, 
uh, you use the white of the paper to do the lights. You don't go over the white of the paper. You, you preserve the white of the paper. And, and you, you build the lightness from this. So usually in watercolor, the lights are made by the negative shapes. You work around the shape of the light. You don't paint the light. Like digital media, usually you, you work as we work in oil painting. It's like we, we paint the light on top of the shadows. But in watercolor or transparent media, you don't have this white. So you, you need to work the, the lights in the negative space, the negative shape, uh, around the light. You, you put darker values around the, the light and, and it will show up like light, right? This is the watercolor, transparent. Opaque, what we think when we think about opaque or, or thick painting, we put the light on top of shadow. We, we go to dark and we, we work all of areas with darker values and then we build the light on top with thick paint. Right? So it's, it's a different system. It's the opposite, actually. Uh, and in gouache, what I found out is that we have both. And it, it works beautiful. Like, beautifully. Like this, right here. This is transparent. This is black with water. And this here is opaque. Is black with white paint to make this gray. So we have two ways of doing like gray. We have gray that we make putting white, putting white on black, and then we have gray paint, and then we put, and then we have only black paint with water, because the water on the black paint will make the black uh, transparent. And when the paint is transparent, the light goes through the paint and touch the paper. So this gray here, this gray is here. Can you see in his cheeks here and, and his chin? This is a transparent gray. It's just black with water on paper. And this gray here is opaque. It's the gray with black and white paint, thick, right? So in the same painting, I have transparent and opaque, right? And this relation between transparent and opaque will build the three-dimensional three uh, uh, feeling. We, we feel that uh, kind of looks like 3D. It, it, it kind of convinces us, right? Uh, here as well, when we use color, look at this mid-tones, mid-value here. This is transparent and this is opaque. So, if, I don't know if this is new for you guys, but this is very important to understand. That's why we, we don't begin painting like figurative. We, we first understand the method. So we are going to use these stairs here. We are going to call the transparent. And this opaco. Right? And here in the middle we have the black. Black, pure black. So what am I presenting to you? It's like two of these scales. One is here and one is here. This one we are going to build the, look at here, uh, low key, mid key, and, oh no, wait, this is high key because it's on the top, right? The high, is the, the light. Middle is the middle key and the low key is here. So it is low key, mid key, and high key again. So when we are going to, when we are painting with gouache, we have those two scales to work and we need to decide what we are going to work with transparent, what we are going to work with opaque, and how they, they feel and who, who comes first. We, we need to go first for the low keys and the, the transparent, and then we will paint the opaque on top of transparent, right? So we don't begin with, with white yet. So, if we start painting, let's start from here. 
I have a way to show this. Uh, I believe that we need to, to learn something uh, is better when we learn having fun and having a good time. Because it's hard to learn how to paint. It's hard to understand painting. It's frustrating. We, we do a lot of shit paintings until we, we, we start to do something that we are proud of. So we need to find some way to have fun. In the, so I, I, I always, I, I like to talk about important things, but in a funny way or in a relaxed way, right? Because the concepts are there. We don't need to be like boring when we are talking about painting. Especially because we are artists and we know we love our work, we like to have fun. So, what did I do? I, I, I create kind of a, not a game, but a, a way to remember. Uh, when I was doing this, was in the beginning of uh, Adventure Time, and I love all of cartoons and animations. And I really like Adventure Time as well. So I create a way of talking about this process using Finn and Jake, right? So I will show you. It's kind of a game. We begin, we are Finn, and we are here to begin our adventure. And Finn has his brush, he's a painter, and his palette with his colors here, right? So we begin with Finn. Who is Finn's best friend? Jake. Jake is here. I don't remember how to draw Jake very well right now. I think it's like this. Right, Jake is here. And... What do we need to do? The game, we need to touch <laughs> Fins and Jake's hands, right? They, they, they need to, when they see each other, they just do <laughs> So, where is Jake? Jake is here, his hand. And here. Okay, it looks horrible this hand, but you understand this is a hand, right? You, you just forgive me about this. So what do we need to do? What, how, how we think the painting now that we're looking this? This is how it works. In the beginning of the painting, we are, use, we are using transparent. So we begin here. What is this point that Finn is standing up right now? In the lightest value of the transparent scale. So, we are going to put the lightest value. I will try this one. Because it, it's, it's kind of white. It's not white, white, pure white, but it's kind of white. Right. And then we are going to, to build these stairs. Because Finn needs to go there to see his friends. So we need to put a little bit more of paint right now. and a little bit more. Let's see that I'm, I'm doing the, I, I've done here the high key. Now let's move to the mid key. I just keep adding more black to the paint. Well, today is especially noisy with these buses and this stuff. Soon I will be in the city where you, you listen different uh, sounds. Because I, I divide my time in the city, Sao Paulo, that's the largest city in Brazil, and Guararema, that's a small city that where I grew up. So when I'm in Guararema, you listen to the birds and the, the, the animals of the farm. And in Sao Paulo, you listen for the animals of the city. Mid key. Yeah, some of them they look a bit uh, similar, 
Then we need to go back there and put a little bit of more dark. Uh, it depends of the paint. But you need to practice this. You need to practice how to go darker. This paint, as I said, it's not a very good one. But it kind of works. This is, so can you see, what's the begin of the painting? Every paint that you're going to begin, if you want to paint in this method, you begin with water and just a little bit of paint. And you start drawing with this. And then, when you did your, your layout, you go a little bit darker. And you put more details, a little bit darker, a little bit darker. Usually in this part, we are just working with uh, simple shapes and geometric shapes. I, I don't begin with the eyes, and the, I, I begin looking at the, the, the whole thing. Very geometric. I want to find the structure. Then I begin the painting, right? So we always work from the big to the small, from the geometric to the details and the curves and the, 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 the naturalistic shapes right so here i went down and when i arrived here in the black what happened i found my friend so here i did right when i when i arrived in the black i i touched it with with jake and then what what do i need to do the, the next hand is here i need to go up but to go up here, how can I go lighter? Then I need to add white. So, another thing that this helps us to remember. Here, it's more water. Because I'm working transparent. Here, less water. because I'm working opaque and thick. So I will, uh, it's not that I don't put water anymore. I start to put less and less and less and less water until I, I arrive here and it's just white. Straight from the... I don't know how to call this in English. <laughs> in, in Portuguese it's bisnaga. Tube, tube, I think it's tube. Well, straight from here. <laughs> so what, what do I need to do right now? I need to put the white here and then I will go from dark to light. So, I cannot go too, too light here because it's the first step after the, so here. See, there is white there, but I, I hardly can tell. It looks very similar. Then I need to go with more white. The, the, it's easier now because I just need to add white here and go another, another stair. Add white, go another stair. Maybe I can add more white because it's not. Right. Uh, I'm constantly cleaning my brush. I don't know if you can see because it was far here, but it's important to have a paper to clean your brush. If you go straight from the palette to the paper, sometimes you bring a lot, uh, too much paint and it, it doesn't work very well, right? So now, more white here. More white. Mid key. Now the high key, I can come with the, the, the dirty brush just on, the, on top of this white. Put it here. Clean very well. Not very well, just clean it. Here, and then we can clean. Just, just go here. 
grab some white like this and put on top. So, there you go. Now, Finn found Jake again and they, they did the Right, so the game is complete. No, it's not complete, but it's almost there. Uh, all of this that we've done, we've done, we call one round. This is one round. Right? Uh, when we complete, if you complete this and your painting is, is ready, it's done, congratulations, you can go to the next study. If you complete here, you arrive in the white and you notice that some of the black, some of the grays, they are missing, they are not in the right place, then what you do? You do another round and another round. And one painting, it can have many rounds or it can have one round. It depends of, of your ability, your experience, the complexity of the painting, this is, if you are doing just a, a, a simple portrait, like this is sketch painting, you don't need more than one round, maybe two rounds. Uh, but if sometimes I'm painting a complex illustration with a lot of characters, with backgrounds and this stuff, then I need a lot of rounds. I will work first in the background, I will bring the characters later in the, in the painting. So there's other ways, but basically I'm doing this all the time. I'm starting with transparent, starting, starting in the high key, going down to the low key, using black, pure black, and then after I use pure black, I think what I need to do to go up. This is just for value, okay, guys? Uh, later, I will show how to work in this uh, process with color, because with color, sometimes we don't use black. And then we, 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 we put on, instead of black, we use a pure color here. So, so, Let's just begin with the simple and then we go more complex. Like this one here, this painting, it doesn't have uh, black. It's only magenta, yellow and white. So I use this method, but, but it's, it's different. Or like this one, I love uh, Frank Frazetta. Frazetta, I don't know if you've heard about this illustrator, he's an American illustrator. He died not many years ago and he was amazing. He painted a lot, like a lot of fantasy illustrations and book covers and all of this. Uh, and I, I study his work. I love to, to do some, some studies from his works. And see, this is only black and white and value. And I was, I was practicing to understand his process of oil painting, but doing with my gouache painting. And this I did only with magenta and white. And, and you have all of, see, so you have all of this here, but instead of black, it's magenta, pure magenta. And when we put black in the color, there's another way to think, but as I said, usually we don't go, we, we, we uh, keep on this uh, logic. I think that's the, maybe the best way to, to talk. This is a, a logic, you, you, you go and you, you use this logic. Uh, uh, well, I will finish this video here, just to present to you guys, and then I will do a painting using this method. And then you see this being used. I think it's better than me talking here about a lot. But hopefully you understood. Uh, as I said, the best thing about this is that we are not going back. We, we are, we'll try not to go back. If, if you are here, and you want to touch in this stones, you need to go all the all around and then go come back here. We, we don't, you know, we just go straight, 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 straight. We don't uh, move back and forward here. We don't need to when we learn. As I said again, it's just my method, but it's simple and it, it's, it works. And when you are painting, you, you, you will not be arrested because there are not rules like laws. You, you can break these this, this, uh, rules if you want. Uh, well, 
I think you understand. I think you know. I'm just talking this because uh, it's my first video here. I don't know who is going to watch this, so I'm trying to talk like for with people that never painted, maybe. And if you are an advanced artist, uh, just wait that we'll we'll get in that level uh, eventually, right? So as I said, let's uh, get at this moment of pandemic and of all of this desperation that people are saying, let's stay home and let's study. I think it's the best thing we can do right now. Uh, thanks again and I'll talk to you soon. I will try, I will stay at home, I will do a lot of videos. Bye bye!